Hey guys, this is Andy here from CNC Labs. Today I'll be showing you how to carve a topological map using your long wheel. Our first step in this project is going to be to find or make a 3D model. Uh, the easiest way is probably to download STL files from the internet. You can find STL file repositories such as Thingiverse, um, which typically are used for 3D printing, but you can also find a lot of CNC-able options available as well. So we can take a quick look and see what there is. So like the, a lot of these models are CNC-able with your CNC machine. Just as a side note, um, if you're not familiar with what STL means, it's simply just a common file format that's used to store 3D models. Um, a JPEG is used for images, a PDF is used for documents, an STL is simply just another file format for 3D models. If you're using your own CAD software, uh, most software is able to uh, export as an STL file. So if you do design your own mo models, then you can cut those out on a CNC machine. Uh, for this particular project, however, I use a program called Touch Terrain. Um, it's a web, it's a web-based uh, program where you can use this red square and find a spot on the Earth to uh, download a STL file. And I put this square on Mount Rainier, which is in Washington. It's close to where I used to live when I was a kid, so I've been to the mountain before. It's very beautiful. I will post a, a link for the STL file that I used. Uh, one thing to know is that when I did download this STL file, it was a little bit messed up. Um, so I did have to repair it in a program called Mesh Mixer. I'll put some more details on that in the description. Uh, but for if you're a beginner and you're just starting out, then you should be able to find a model that will work uh, for you on Thingiverse or somewhere else online. Let's get into some tooling. In relief carving, uh, the most commonly used tool is a ball end cutter. The reason is, is because when you move back and forth, there's a consistent cut along the radius at the tip of the end mill. This makes it good for car carving smooth curves. By changing the size of our end mill, we can change how much detail we can get out of the project you can get fine tipped end mills like this tapered end mill for very fine relief carving, or you can use something like this eight inch ball mill for carvings that don't require as much detail. For topographical maps, this is a pretty good option. One important thing to know is that the smaller your tool is, the lo longer it will take to complete the relief. Smaller end mills typically remove less material per pass, and you need to run it slower to prevent the tool from bending or breaking. If you do choose to use a smaller tool, you can use a roughing pass, which I'll cover in a few moments to speed up your project. Alrighty guys, let's get into making the G-code for our project. Uh, we'll be using CamLab, which is an awesome, really simple to use cam software for 3D uh, carving. So let's go. So the way that uh, CamLab works is that you can start from the left side going down and then go from the right side going down. Um, this side helps you set up the uh, set up the carving and then this lets you choose what sort of sort of carving that you want to do along the right uh, along the right side. So let's start off with the, with the left side. The first button you can see is the machine. You're able to pick what size machine that you're using. In this case, uh, most people will be using a, a long wheel, but you can also do this with uh, all of these other machines as well. Um, these settings are basically to show you the visual representation of how big the bed is. So for example, uh, CNC mill one V2 has a 234 by 185 millimeter bed size. So that's what's indicated here. And so if I go and click on long mill 30, you can see that now we have a 30 mil, uh, 
30 inch bed or a uh, 762 millimeter width and depth bed as well. Um, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really affect the actual code, uh, what size machine you're using, but it's a good representation visually if you're doing like a big STL file or if you need to make sure that your model is going to fit inside your machine. Uh, so the next step is going to be to import your model. You can find some recent files by clicking on the plus sign, or if you want to click on import, you can find the file on your computer. This one's the one that I'm going to be using, and I'll open that up so you can see that we have our model here. The next step is for material size. This is just this is also not uh, important in terms of the actual cutting. But it's another visual representation of uh, being able to see um, how big your material is in relation to the model. So for my particular um, pr uh, block of wood, it's 150 by 140 by 40 millimeters. So I can press enter and you can see that there's a visual representation of the size of that block here. Um, so our next step is going to be looking at positioning. You can pick the origin point of the project. Right now it's set to origin center. If I click on that, you'll see the end mill travels to the bottom left corner. Uh, origin top, if I click on that, you'll see that it starts from the bottom or the bottom surface of the project. Um, if I click on it again, it'll move it up to the top. Uh, for this particular project, I'm going to be finding the origin point off the bottom left top corner. I'll be using the touch plate to home the machine off the block, and that's going to be our zero point for this project. So I'm going to keep origin center off, origin top on, and you'll see that the end mill goes to the bottom left corner. Um, snap to top, Z top offset, and Z segment are a little bit more of a complicated setting. I'd recommend turn keeping these off for now. Um, and I will explain these in a separate video uh, for, Kiri, uh, for for Cam Lab. Uh, in, for tools, we'll be selecting the tool that we want to use. In this case, uh, for the roughing pass, we're going to be using the quarter inch end mill. Uh, you can click on tools and select um, any of these tools, or you can make your own based on the features that you want to set for them. Um, you'll find a bunch of preset end mills as well. But for this project, we're going to start with a quarter inch end mill and then move on to an eighth inch bit later on. We're going to move from the left, uh, sorry, the right side down. Um, we have path alterations. So for pocket only, uh, what that means is uh, stops it from cutting the object's perimeter. So what when I do the roughing pass, it'll cut all the way to the outside of the material, all the way down to the surface. If I have pocket only turned on, uh, it will only cut the inside part of the perimeter. So I won't show this in too much detail right now, but I will recommend playing around with these settings and generating the code and seeing the visual representation of what each of those things do. Uh, depth first is um, if you have multiple pockets or multiple holes, it'll cut uh, that part first before cutting the remaining part of the layer and that helps speed things up and clockwise is the direction of your cut whether it's going to be uh, looping around clockwise or counterclockwise so uh, for this particular project I'm going to do pocket only reason is because the model is actually larger than the block that I'm cutting so if I do pocket only it won't leave any borders around that project uh, for depth first, it doesn't really matter because there are no pockets in this model, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Before I get into the roughing, uh, I am going to do one other thing. If you double click on the model, it'll bring up a tool, a set of tools which will allow you to scale and change the STL model that you have. Uh, in this case, when I exported this model, I actually made it half thickness, or I it was smooshed down on the z-axis by half. So you can see it looks like a pretty flat model. But if I click uniform, which essentially makes it so that it doesn't scale up all three of the dimensions simultaneously, it'll let me just do one at a time. 
and I can scale up my z-axis by 4, press enter, you can see that it looks a lot more like a mountain now. And so you can play around with these scale settings to adjust the size of your model if you have different size material. And you can see that there's a readout with the sizes along the bottom here as well. Uh, if you need to change the rotation of your model, you can also do that inside here as well. So we're going to start off by doing the roughing. Um, I'm going to change the settings here. Uh, I'm going to use 0.5 for the step over, 3.5 millimeters for step down, 2,500 for feed rate, 250 for plunge rate, and leaf stock at one millimeter. So I'll quickly explain what those settings does. Um, I'll have another video later going into more detail about all these settings in, uh, in Cam Lab. But uh, just a quick thing is that for step over, what this indicates is um, how densely packed the passes are going to be. So the end mill is going to go layer by layer, uh, cutting down, 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 down. And that's going to adjust um, the percentage of the pass. Uh, step down is how deep it cuts for each layer. So in this particular case, we are cutting down 3.5 millimeters. I'm just going to generate this so you can actually see this. All right, so you can see for the um, step over, you can see the lines are ne right next to each other. So there's a line here, there's a line here. Those are all the tool paths. So with a higher step over or a larger number on this setting here, the lines will be further apart because more of the end mill is going to be engaged per pass. Step down indicates the thickness of each layer. So you can see that there's steps per for each layer. Um, these are all going to be three, uh, um, maximum 3.5 millimeters. You can adjust the step down based on how quickly you want to remove the material. Feed rate is the speed in the x and y direction as it's cutting. So as it's following these lines, that's how fast it's going to move. The plunge rate is how fast it moves on the z. So while as it's traveling between each layer and it's cutting down, that's how fast it's going to move. And the leaf stock is a little bit interesting because it offsets the tool pass one millimeter away from the, um, from the stock. And that's basically leaving a, layer, uh, a one millimeter layer away from the material so that when we get to a finishing or relief pass, um, we'll have one millimeter of space between the actual model and the cutting of the, the relief or the finishing. Um, this is going to be the minimum amount for that. Some, some, some spots are going to have larger leftover stock. So that's the settings for that. I'm going to export this and save it to the computer for the roughing. And I already have this saved onto my computer, so I won't actually save this right now. You can change the file name here as well and then press download to download the file. So now that's just for roughing. To do finishing, or sorry, for the relief, we're going to go down left to right again. Um, these settings will all stay the same. The only thing we're going to change is for the tool. We're going to be using an eighth inch ball mill for the relief. Click on that. Go down. We're going to leave all these settings the same. We're going to turn off roughing and then go down to relief. So as I was talking earlier, uh, step over is the amount of engagement that the tool is going to get. Right now it's 50%. So each pass will be uh, half of this, the diameter of the tool. So it'll have a resolution of about uh, 1.5, 1.6 millimeters. Um, one thing you should know is that the closer the lines are together on a relief pass, the, the more detail you're going to get in the, oops, 
trying to move this. There you go. The more uh, detail you're going to get in the final carving. So for this, I'm going to change this to 0.1 millimeters. Or sorry, not 0.1 millimeters. I'm going to change this to 0.1 or 10%. So every pass is going to take away about 0.3 millimeters as it goes back and forth. So if I click generate, um, hold on, let me just finish putting these settings in. My feed rate is going to be 2500. Plunge rate is going to be 800. Max angle is going to be 85. My, I'm going to turn off linear Y and leave everything else the same. Press generate. There you go. So you can see now there's a whole ton of lines that make up for this relief. I'm going to click on single layer, which will show me just one part of the line. I can drag this down. And you can see that those are the lines that the machine's going to go back and forth on to carve the mountain out. And I've turned off uh, no linear Y because I don't want it to be carving on the in the opposite up and down direction. So uh, the other things you should know, feed rate is the speed that is going to be going, going back and forth. Our plunge rate is going to be how fast it's moving on the z-axis. In this particular case for the relief cuts, um, because it's moving simultaneously up and down and right to left or left to right, um, these, both these settings uh, are kind of important. Um, I find that this, these settings should work. Uh, you can also adjust them uh, be using speed override during the cut as well, which I'll be showing later. Um, so let's start off with these settings and go from there. Our max angle is um, what the maximum angle that the relief is going to cut. Uh, if it's up, to, it can go up to 90 degrees. So that's going to be like a vertical or a cliff or like a ver like any vertical lines. It'll try, it'll try to ignore anything that's above this angle. Um, and then, yeah, this, these are for choosing if we're going to go left and right or up and down. Uh, so I only, I'm only going to be doing the x-axis for this. So those are the settings for the relief. And you can export this again as well and save this to your computer. And we'll be using uh, both files separately uh, and doing a tool change in between. And you can change the name here and download and save. So we're going to start off the cut with a quarter inch end mill. And this will be for a roughing pass. This process is going to remove the majority of the material before we get into the relief cut. And of course, using my favorite hold down method, hot glue, we're going to bring put our block on the waste board here. So what we need to do at this point is find the origin point for the start of our job. I'll be using the touch plate to find that corner point. Uh, if you're not familiar with how the touch plate works, you want to start off by moving the end mill to where the circle or the starting point is. And when we press probe on the universal G-code center platform, it'll home the uh, end mill to the bottom left corner of our block. So you can see here, I'm moving the end mill to where the circle is on top of the touch plate and then I'll press probe and you'll see the machine automatically move touch off on the touch plate and do each side of the touch plate and figure out the origin point of this block. I'll put a link to the uh, touch plate video on 
the description. And once that process is completed, you can remove the touch plate and the machine will have the bottom left corner as our origin point. Before you start cutting, make sure you have the right G-code loaded up for the roughing pass. You can see the visualization here to double check. Alright, so let's get our roughing pass started. So as I was going along, I felt like we could push the machine to go a little bit faster. So I used a feature called Overrides in Universal G-Code Platform to boost the speed by 200%. So you can see we went from around 2,000, 2,800 millimeters per minute to about 4,000 millimeters per minute. So the whole roughing pass took maybe around 15 minutes to do. So as we mentioned before, this process is going to take away the bulk of the material. And you can see that each step is 3.5 millimeters tall, which is what we set our amount to in uh, CamLab. So now that we have our roughing pass completed, we're going to get into probably what I think is the most tricky part of this whole job, which is the tool change. Say again? So I'm going to take off the quarter inch end mill and pull that out and I'll be replacing it with our eighth inch ball mill. In pine, that's pretty cool. Like fast. Yeah. So the part that makes this tricky is that you want to keep your zero on the X and Y, but because our tool length changed, because the eighth inch ball mill is shorter than our quarter inch end mill, we want to make sure that the tip of the end mill is at the right zero point. So what I will do for this job is move the eighth inch ball mill to the very top peak of the mountain, which we know is our zero point. And we're only going to be zeroing the Z axis. So we're gonna once that the tip of that end mill is right on top of that part of the mountain, I'm going to change the height on the Z to zero by pressing the zero button. So you can see we have our X and Y coordinates to be those two numbers, but our Z is now at zero. So once we move to uh, return to zero, our origin point is going to be uh, exactly the same as when we were doing uh, it with a quarter inch. To get started on our relief cut, make sure to load up the second part of the G code that we created in CamLab for the relief. So you can send the G code to the machine. And as you can see here, we're going back and forth on the material to do the relief cut. And since we set our step over to be 0.1, you can see that the, each pass is quite small. And once you join each pass together, you can create this pretty detailed mountain range. For this particular uh, project, I did change the feed rate override to, I believe, 180%. So, uh, we're going at about 3,800 millimeters per minute. Uh, the relief pass took around 20 minutes and there it's just about to finish. Now I'll take my handy uh, paint scraper and pop off my relief and there you go. And there you have it, making a topological relief 
on the long mill. And you can see I did another one of Mount Everest. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Until next time.